Cranes today are some of the most versatile pieces of equipment to be found working on many industrial and construction sites. They are capable of lifting a variety of loads to great heights over great distances. When used correctly on firm level ground and with a fully trained and competent lifting team, mobile cranes are also one of the safest items of equipment. The Slinger Signaler is one valuable member of the lifting team. Making sure that the load is attached to the crane safely is your responsibility. If the load slips when it's being lifted, it could fall and cause a serious accident. Preparing any load to be lifted and making sure that the accessories are used correctly requires skill and experience. This short film provides the knowledge you will need in order to gain experience. There are seven main steps needed to plan the slinging of every load. If you follow all these steps, you can be sure that you have done your job safely. Step 1. Checking the weight of the load. Step 2. Choosing the right lifting accessory. Step 3. Attaching the load to the crane using the right technique. Step 4. Lifting and transferring the load. Step 5. Positioning the load. Step 6. Removing the lifting accessory. Step 7. Storage and maintenance of lifting accessories. Step 1. Checking the weight. On this particular load, the weight is marked, but that won't always be the case. Until you know what the load weighs, you can't continue with the lift. If there is no record of the weight on the load, then maybe the manufacturers can tell you, or an engineer can calculate the load weight for you. Failing that, you will need to estimate the load. To do this, you will need to consider the size of the load, the shape of the load, what is the material it's made out of, is it solid, is it hollow, and if so, is it empty, or does it contain fluids or other materials which might move during lifting, causing the centre of gravity to move. Once you think you can estimate the load, you will have to increase your estimation by at least 25% as a factor of safety. Lift the load slowly until the crane operator can confirm the weight on the hook block. Step 2. Choosing the right lifting accessory. There are many various types of lifting accessory suitable for different lifting operations. The first question to ask is how can the accessory be fitted to the load? Some loads are quite simple and have nice convenient lifting points. But some other loads like these, beams, concrete blocks, pipes, scaffold poles, test weights, jib sections, fly jib sections, may have built-in lifting points. But watch out, these lifting points may be worn and become rusty. And if you're not sure about them, it's better to be safe and find another method. If there is no convenient lifting point, then your sling will have to go around the load. Some loads will be difficult to get hold of, possibly heavy or just awkward. If you're not sure, ask for assistance. As a slinger, you need to choose the right sling. With so many different types of slings available, it can be a bit confusing. Chain and wire slings will mark the delicate machine surfaces of many loads, so a man-made fibre sling can guard against this. All lifting slings can be severely damaged by lifting loads with sharp edges. It's good practice to always use suitable packing material. Do we need a single leg sling or a sling with multiple legs? With so many slings available, it's not just what the sling is made from that's important, it's how long do they need to be. Single leg slings are suitable for lifting many loads with suitable single lifting points, such as motors, pumps and concrete skips. 
Lifting a load like this is dangerous. It may swing, be difficult to handle and probably fall. Using a multi-leg sling with two legs like this supports the load securely. Is the WLL, that's working load limit, of the sling greater than the weight of the load? Now for the sling angle. The angle of the sling legs is called the alpha angle, sometimes known as the included angle, and these angles are very important. The further the sling legs are apart, or greater the angle, the higher the loading is in the sling legs. The maximum recommended included angle is 90 degrees. The maximum included angle for any sling is 120 degrees. There are two methods of rating the safe working load of multi-leg slings. The uniform load method and the trigonometrical load method. The uniform load method now incorporates the newer European harmonised marking system. And the trigonometrical method, which is older, is not as widely used as the uniform load method and is the least popular method. You'll find some multi-leg slings are marked by the manufacturer using one SWL at 0 to 90 degrees and another from 90 to 120 degrees. This one shows that the sling is safe to lift 5.4 tonnes at any included angle up to 90 degrees and 4.5 tonnes between 90 to 120 degrees. The new harmonised method of marking multi-leg slings now uses the beta angle method. That's the angle of the sling leg from the vertical. You'll find some multi-leg slings are marked by the manufacturer using one SWL at 0 to 45 degrees and another from 45 to 60 degrees. This one shows that the sling is safe to lift 5.4 tonnes at any included angle up to 45 degrees and 4.5 tonnes between 45 to 60 degrees. These two methods are widely used in industry and are identical in the way the rating for working load limit is calculated but are expressed in different ways. As a slinger, it's your responsibility to ensure that the slings are being used correctly. Check that the sling's included angle is no bigger than 90 degrees, that's 45 degrees to the vertical. If the sling is not marked for use at an angle, or you have doubts about its markings, then simply don't use it. With the sling selected by type, size, number of legs and SWL, you can get on with the lifting operation and get the slings. First, there's some certification to be checked to make sure that the lifting accessories are legal and safe to use. All lifting accessories require the working load limit and a unique identity number to be stamped on the item or on a tag. These must correspond to a current six-monthly thorough examination report and a manufacturer's test certificate. All lifting accessories should be kept in a manner that will limit deterioration damage and prevent unauthorised use. Don't leave them lying about where they can get damaged, go rusty and possibly be misused. If there's not enough lifting accessories to warrant a store then at least some sort of rack to hang the items off the floor and a person should be made responsible for looking after them. Before using the lifting accessory it's always best practice to inspect the item for obvious signs of damage, even though all the certification is in order. If during the inspection you spot any damage, then you must ensure the accessory is not used until a competent person has carried out further examination. Mark the item and ensure that it cannot be used by any other person by locking it away in a secure store. When taking the slings to the load, do not drag the slings along the floor. Dragging causes wear and can damage the sling. Grit and dirt can penetrate the fibre of some slings and can cause internal wear. If the slings are too heavy, get some assistance. Step 3. Fitting the sling to the load. Now we're ready for the next step in our lift. 
but which slinging technique is the best? The basket hitch used here is not a very suitable method because the load will almost certainly slip out from the sling legs. The safest, most efficient slinging method, especially when lifting a bundled load such as these scaffolding poles, is to use choke hitch. The choke hitch grips the load firmly. See how the slinger has gone around the load twice with the sling legs. This double wrapping of the legs increases the clamping force without the need to batten down the hook like this. Battening down the hook is dangerous and can damage the sling. It's always important to check the position of the load's centre of gravity, which will always position itself directly below the lifting point, namely the crane hook. Sometimes the load will have a well-defined centre of gravity, but other times you will have to judge for yourself by measuring the load and placing the sling legs an equal distance either side of the centre. This is in addition to ensuring that the crane jib head is over the centre of the load and that the hoist rope is vertical, and then carrying out a trial lift. This is done by lifting the load slightly at first to ensure that the load hangs level. If no checks are done for the correct positioning of the crane boom and hoist rope, and the slings are positioned off-centre, then as soon as the load is lifted, it can swing violently and possibly cause injury to persons or damage to the load and property. When you have to lift a load with an offset centre of gravity, like this, then you will have to use sling legs of different lengths and having different angles to get the centre of gravity under the hook. This means that the sling legs will take different loads. If you haven't been trained to do this, then don't attempt it and seek the advice of a competent person. Step 4. The lift. We have our slings and we have our load, so let's lift. Is the area clear of unauthorised persons and have we checked the route that the load will take? This is to ensure that the load does not pass over the heads of people and that there are no proximity hazards to be concerned about. Have we discussed the lift with the crane operator and have we agreed the method of communications? The most common method is the hand signals stated in BS 7121, 1989, the code of practice for the safe use of cranes. High step, lower, lower slowly, but if you prefer we will do one big circle to indicate lower slowly. Jib up, jib down, cease operations. Is that okay with you? Now is the time to place a hand line on the load if needed especially for loads that are long and difficult to handle, or loads that have a large sail area. Always ensure that the hand line is not wrapped around the user's hands or body. When lifting the load, be sure to keep hands and fingers away from the bite of a sling. Trapped hands and fingers are a very common lifting accident, and it could lead to a severe injury or even amputation. Let us try that lift again. That's the correct hand signal for inch the load up. But not very far. As we've seen before, it's good practice to check your slings are correctly positioned and the load hangs level. This load is still not right, so it's lowered and the slinger repositions the slings. Step 5 setting the load down. Now you have positioned the load where you want it to be, you are ready to lower. This is where the tagline will be helpful. Check that the area is clear of obstructions and the ground is suitable to accept the weight of the load and that all unauthorised persons are clear. Check that the load can be properly supported by using suitable supports. Lower the load until it's just clear of the ground and stop. Using the correct hand signal, indicate to the crane operator to lower the load slowly until the load is secure and stable. Remember, the slinger must exercise care when lowering the load. It's surprising how many slingers trap their own feet. 
Step 6. Releasing the sling safely. Now it's time to release the sling safely. Ensure that the sling legs are not under tension. See how the timber supports make the removal of the slings easier, without the need for the crane to drag them out. Dragging them out damages the slings and can pull the load over. Once the slings are released from the load, hook back the sling legs to the master ring. Hooking back the legs prevents the risk of being hit by the swinging legs. Signal the crane operator to hoist the slings up slowly and guide the sling legs clear of the load and any obstruction until they are above head height and they can be seen by the operator. Step 7. The clear up. The last of our simple steps is to ensure that the site is clear and that all lifting accessories have been returned to the store. So remember the seven steps. 1. You have got to know how much the load weighs before you can start. 2. Choosing your sling depends on how you are going to lift the loads, the sling material, the number of legs you need, and the included angle. 3. Fitting the sling means watching out for the load centre of gravity and choosing the best slinging method. You never lift a load until you check it's free and the area it's going into is clear. 4. Don't lift it high until you've checked the sling and cleared everyone away from the lift. 5. Set the load down using a tagline. Remember to avoid your own feet. 6. Release the slings without dragging them out and damaging them. And when you take slings back to the stores, point out any problems and any damage. 7. Finally, clear up the site and you're ready for the next lift.